With the state of war declared, we can now drop a nuclear bomb on California. I'm sure many of you have had the same idea in the past. And with that, Tojo has shot first. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing for more of them, and hit me up in the comments with what you want to see next. Now, on to the video. Hey folks, it's me, Bader Steel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. Today, we will be playing as the nation that brought us anime and the samurai. That's right, we're gonna play as Japan. Also, has anyone noticed that it's only the Axis Majors who have leaders wearing hats? I'm seeing some sort of hat conspiracy here. Alright, as Japan, we will be going for a few achievements, at least one. We'll see if we can get the others. We will be trying to get ourselves the Sunrise Invasion, which requires us to successfully invade Mexico, followed up by successfully invading a coastal European province before 1945, I believe. And while we're doing that, uh, let's see if we can get some of these other interesting Japanese achievements. I believe there's also Tojo Shot First, which requires us to develop nuclear weapons before the US and then bombing the US. Doesn't seem too difficult. And finally, La Tour de France. <laughs> which requires us to occupy all of mainland France and have, I believe, 20 fully equipped bicycle divisions. Let's see if we can uh, make any of these happen, shall we? Let's hop on in. Just stick to Iron Man mode and historical AI focuses on for that uh, predictable gameplay. And here we are, 1936 Japan. Isn't she a beauty? Let's start out by looking at the military. Okay, we got 60 divisions. Most of these are garbage. 30 of them are uh, some sort of garrison division. Let's see this template. Yeah, not perfect. 12 combat with infantry. Not perfect. The actual decent infantry. We have 15 of these. Ooh, they're chunky. They're chunky. We can work with this. We can work with this. So that's 15 of those, leaving us with 15 others. Ooh, Marines. 14 others. These are our fast divisions. Okay, uh, let's balance this out somewhat. Okay, we'll have one army that will devote to decent infantry. We'll convert these shitty ones. We'll have another army full of whatever's left of uh, infantry units. We'll convert these when we have the equipment to. So we'll need a lot of equipment. These are not even fully equipped as of yet. And then we have 12 of these uh, faster units that we're not really going to be using much after our initial gains. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of these two. That leaves us with 10 units. And that's the uh, limit we can use on early game naval invasion. We'll start our first naval invasion with these guys because of their speed. And for now, that's army organization done. Next up, the navy. Japan starts with a very extensive navy. Now, personally, I'm not great at micromanaging a navy. Fortunately, if you're playing single player, like I usually am, you can bypass all of the naval strategy by researching and producing submarine threes with the best equipment you can fit on it. The AI has nothing to counter it. But since Japan starts with an extensive fleet, might as well make use of it. What I like to do is just select all of your ships, put them in a single fleet. Then once they've grouped up, I like to split off my submarines from my surface fleet and then divide these two fleets into different task forces, depending on how many sea areas we need to cover and how many ships we have available to us. We'll do that in a bit. The game needs to pass a few days for these ships to group up. Production. We'll need guns. So five factories on guns. Need a bit more support equipment as well. We will need a lot of artillery for what I have in mind. So let's fill out a full line of those, leaving us with two more spare military factories. As you can see, we're only producing fighters and carrier naval bombers. I would like to produce some carrier fighters as well and some close air support. The sky is still a very important battlefield in Hearts of Iron 4. Now I do recommend filling out this artillery line first. Artillery takes quite a bit longer to reduce than infantry equipment. So I recommend filling it up eh, somewhere along these lines. You can fiddle with the infantry equipment and support equipment if you notice a large deficit in either one. And once all that's filled out, we can get some more planes out there. As for the naval production, not much going on here. We can simply either delete all of these ships, we won't need them, or just leave them running. I'll just leave them running, considering it's not that important and we'll have plenty of steel to work with anyway. With production out of the way, let's head for construction. Military factories. Just build military factories in our high infrastructure provinces. Once these are all done, we can uh, throw in some uh, 
some infrastructure in your resource producing areas to get ourselves some more steel, some more tungsten, or, uh, well, even more military factories, depending on the needs of the campaign. Research is nothing fancy, just our basic industry techs, such as engineering, construction, and basic machine tools. And we will also start out by getting rid of the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine and switching over to superior firepower. Personally, I much prefer superior firepower. I pick it almost every time, unless I'm playing a nation that is very suited to mobile warfare doctrine, or if you absolutely need the early game defense that you get from trench warfare such as uh, if you're playing China, for instance. But we're not, so superior firepower it is. Now, I'm not going to constantly uh, be calling out what I'm researching. It's not that important. It's just basically you keep up with your industry techs and you keep up with your infantry equipment. Then use either spare research slots or if you have 100 army experience or navy experience or air experience to get those respective doctrines and those techs whenever you need them, really. One thing I would recommend you research early is the uh, KI-20 the 1936 fighter for Japan as it's better to have a good fighter early on so you can start producing some of them. And finally, focuses. We will be starting out with the army expansion law for that 30 army experience. We will need quite a bit of army experience to change out our templates. 30 should be enough. I don't think we'll need to exercise our troops so we can conserve some equipment. The strategy I have in mind does not provide us with a lot of early game army XP for free. So we'll take this and... Uh, work with it. Now finally in our decisions tab we'll see a lot of things. The naval treaties we don't care. Italy violates them anyway. None of these are particularly interesting except for these. The inter-service arrival rate. There's a few options here such as prioritize steel for guns where we get some um, military factories in exchange for losing some dockyard output and some dockyard construction speed. We also get some bonuses to factory output and factory construction speed it takes 50 political power and this is basically a um, a representation of the struggles that Japan had at the time between its naval component and its regular army component constantly jostling for supremacy now you can have a read through these they're all quite interesting I personally just prefer to stick with prioritized steel for guns to get a lot of stuff out there but the other ones are certainly interesting if you want to play around with them and with that our basic setup is done before we unpause the game let's have a look at our fellow future Axis members here. First off, Italy. Let's ask for docking rights. Uh, maybe maybe you already have an idea what I'm going to try here. And then the Germans. Let's see if they want us in their faction. Ask to join faction. This is going to create a little bit of world tension and nothing too serious. And they'll accept. With that, we can unpause the game and get Kraken. Et voila! acceptance across the board. Now with Germany having allowed us into the Axis, we can now access their territory and we have use of their naval bases. Italy gave us use of their naval bases as well, greatly expanding our naval range. Why do we need so much naval range, you ask, and why do we need it in Europe? Well, as you can see, the United States and Mexico are all the way across the Pacific. Well, we could go island hopping across the Pacific, hit Hawaii, and then from Hawaii go on to um, invade the US and Mexico. Yes, we'll need to take out the US because of this guarantee here. No fighting Mexico on their own, unfortunately. Well, we could go across the Pacific, but where's the fun in that? When we could just go from from here. Now look at this area here, Curaçao and I believe Suriname. These are two Dutch territories. Now where are the Netherlands located? Right here in Europe next to Germany. So what we're going to do is start a naval invasion from the port of Wilhelmshaven and hit the Netherlands in the back. These 10 divisions will be landing in the Netherlands and due to their speed, they'll be able to capitulate the Netherlands before the Dutch army has any chance of responding. When we knock the Netherlands out, we'll simply be taking their American holdings, so we can use them as staging grounds, then we'll puppet them in their European territory, and we can also take the Dutch East Indies from them. Doing that already guarantees us um, access to European coastal territory before 1945, so if you're not up to fighting a large war with the Allies, you can call it quits after we take out the US and get yourself an achievement. But that's not all. To us, that's just phase one of the plan. So getting your troops there won't be an issue, they'll just sail over there. Getting the Navy there, however, might be a bit of a challenge. As you can see, the naval range is insufficient to sail to Europe in one go. All of these red uh, marked territories are outside of our naval range. We do have the use of the European bases here and some of the African coast is accessible to us, but we can't sail through this red territory, meaning our fleet is stuck in Japan. Or is it? Let's have a look here. Our converted hulls 
the Kaga, Hosho and Akagi have a naval range of 4000 kilometers which should be enough. However, they are being held back by the smaller vessels, such as the destroyers, who only have a naval range of 1500 kilometers. So we can simply bypass that by taking out these converted ships, putting them in their own little fleet. Now we select this tiny fleet here, and you can see there's a gap in the red area, meaning our ships can actually sail to Europe without problems. We'll have three aircraft carriers in Europe and in theory that should be more than enough to get ourselves naval superiority over the Dutch fleet. However, I've also discovered a bit of cheese that allows the rest of our fleet to get there and I'll get to that in a minute. We'll also want to justify a war goal on the Netherlands. We can either just take one of their European territories, we'll take 39 pp, 195 days and get us 6% world tension. However, they have a puppet. What if we justify on the puppet? Same cost, same duration, but only 2% world tension. And as a fascist nation, I think we like to keep world tension low for as long as possible. So we'll be justifying on the Dutch East Indies once we can. A few moments later. Ah, there we go. Our aircraft carriers have arrived in Europe. Now for a bit of cheese. If we were to select this fleet and then order it to merge with the larger fleet, this would cause the carriers to sail back to Japan. That's not what we want. However, if we were to select the large fleet, excuse me, I'm gonna split off these submarines. Now, if I were to select this larger fleet and tell them to merge up with the carriers, that will cause the large fleet to sail to Europe to group up with the carrier task force. And for some reason, they completely ignore naval range. I have no idea why Paradox still hasn't fixed this, but for now, it still works in 1.9.3. Simply select the fleet that has insufficient range, tell them to merge up with the ships who are already at location, and they'll simply sail there. One hour later. And I got carried away. We have more than enough political power to get our justification in. Let's justify a war goal on the Dutch East Indies. 39 political power, so I'm uh, eh, nine days late. Doesn't matter, we're still well within the world tension limits. And as you can see, the entire fleet has arrived. They have completely ignored their naval range and have simply sailed to Wilhelmshaven. Uh, great, I guess. I really hope Paradox fixes this, it's a bit stupid. Uh, the army expansion law is done. Let's have a look for other focuses here. There's two ways to go about this. I would ignore the leftmost tree Operation Unthinkable or the Unthinkable option. The communist path, I would ignore that. Same for the democratic path as they will make it very difficult to be powerful enough to achieve our goals. Now the two center branches, I think they'll both work. You can either purge the Kohoda faction or support it. One is the typical fascist path on the left and on the right you have the more monarchist oriented path like i said i believe they both work i personally like to stick with the purging as this will uh, yield more predictable results but if you want to go and restore the emperor perfectly fine now the focuses you'll want to be getting first no matter if you support or purge the faction will be these in the center as these will improve your industry and mobilization laws giving you a more robust economy through the factories you get for free here there are also some bonuses involved on the left and on the right and the national mobilization law will give you war economy for free which is great and even further down the national defense state will give you total mobilization for free which is not terrible but you do lose quite a bit of recruitable pop doing it so that's up to you if you want to pick this or not now i recommend going if you're following my path going down purge guide the zaibatsus the national mobilization law nationalize the war industry and then the national research policy if you want to do the tree on the right, simply follow its mirror path. After you get down here and get the last research slot, you can pick whichever focus you like. It doesn't really impact the rest of the run. Now, we also have a nice chunk of uh, army experience here that we can now put to use. We will be editing the large infantry template. As you can see, it's 24 combat width already, so it's quite chunky. And we want to make it even chunkier. And for exactly 30 army experience, we can turn this into a 40 width infantry artillery template. This is fairly decent for offensive operations, being 40 width. It has a nice amount of soft attack because of the four artillery battalions. It has decent-ish defense and breakthrough. It's not perfect. 
but versus the AI, this is a very competent offensive template. And considering Japan isn't really in a position to start mass producing tanks just yet, this will be the template of our choice, who will be primarily an infantry based nation until we have dealt with the United States of America. And as you can see, our industry has its work cut out for it. We are heavily in the red. And let's also convert all of the units in the decent army into the new template. These units will be the backbone of our American offensive. Now if like me you like playing with the intelligence agency features of La Resistance, I recommend you build it early and focus the espionage part on the United States early game to build a network to be able to defeat them easier and also so you're able to do some operations like collaboration governments, uh, reducing their resistance to occupation once we finally do take their territory. Any cryptology can be focused on future enemies like France or the United Kingdom because it will simply take too long to get it done before it will have any effect on our American war. And with that, our justification is done. We'll simply select the Netherlands, being the overlord, and declare our conflict. Don't call in the rest of the Axis though. We can do this on our own. We don't need them meddling and taking territory. Make sure you have the fleet on uh, convoy escort or invasion support, whichever gets you naval superiority, and kick off our invasion. <laughs> And, uh, well, that concludes our invasion. I think it took less than two seconds. And in the peace deal, let's see. Let's satellite the Dutch East Indies for that sweet, sweet rubber. We'll be taking the area of Curaçao and Suriname for ourselves. These will be our staging areas. And now we'll simply puppet the Netherlands. We can now use these American territories as staging grounds for invading the United States. Once we have dealt with the US, who are very weak this early in the game, we can turn our attention to Mexico. We can simply sweep them aside and conquer whatever we need. All we need for the achievement is to simply gobble up the remains of the Netherlands through the subject mechanics, and we'll have that achievement done in no time. We'll be launching a naval invasion from Curaçao with our good units and hitting the south of the US near Mobile and Biloxi. We'll want to improve the infrastructure or at least the naval base in the area. We'll be taking heavy attrition. Our secondary reserve army can sit on Suriname. We'll also move the fleet over they will be starting naval escorts along the Caribbean Sea and Florida coast, making sure we can actually get our naval invasions to land. Now one thing I do like to do is split off a smaller naval invasion to hit Panama. If we take the Panama Canal, our supply route will be much shorter and won't have to go all the way around South America. Now our fast units have done their duty. We will no longer be requiring their services, so I will simply be disbanding them. Now as for our political power investments, we won't have to worry about going to a war economy. We can get there through our focuses, mainly specifically this one, national mobilization law. So our investments will be put to good use in other places. A good first investment is usually the silent workhorse, getting that 50% bonus early. Now for our war goals on the Mexicans, 36 PP, 180 days, and only raises world tension by 5%. And again, I was super slow and got distracted, so I'm a little over target, but uh, the overall strategy doesn't change. This is, this is perfectly fine. Now for other PP investments, I recommend spending that political power on the military first. And the infantry expert is always a good place to start, as is the army logistics. I'm going to take army logistics first to minimize our division attrition. And with the national research policy done, personally, I'm going to start heading for bicycle battalions myself. And with that, our justification is complete. We're now ready to take on the big dog, the United States of America. Well, and Mexico, but well, Mexico doesn't matter. So we'll just slow the game way, way down. And let's see if we can win this. Also, don't forget to take at least some protective measures along your own coastline to ensure your trade isn't completely destroyed. It will be a short war, but still. Once the carrier task forces have done their job along the American coast, you can redirect them through the Panama Canal, provided you've taken it, and help secure your own sea zones.
And with that, the United States of America have capitulated. That takes out the biggest giant in the game very early on. If we're not looking to do Tojo shot first, now would be a good time to simply puppet the United States and use their manpower, use their factories, use their templates, etc. without having to police this entire area. However, that makes it difficult to do Tojo shot first because they'll still be able to do research and you run the risk of them getting nuclear weapons before you. Plus, it's quite expensive to then annex them through the subject mechanics, only to then release them again, bomb them, then annex them again. It feels a bit pointless. So for the purpose of this video, we'll simply annex them. We are gonna satellite Hawaii and Puerto Rico. We'll satellite the Philippines and we'll simply take all states. Fortunately, we have some good compliance in place due to our earlier espionage operations. The best method of dealing with resistance is a good garrison template. This is a good starter template to uh, deal with suppression. Just fill it up completely with cavalry. Once you have it researched, add in the military police. And once your industry allows for it, you can start switching out individual battalions for armored cars for um, some more durability. Now we just have Mexico to contend with. I think our stockpiles will allow us to change our secondary army over to the good templates as well. We're a little bit of uh, infantry equipment short, but that's no real issue. And that's Mexico dealt with. We'll simply take all their states. It's quite a big look in Japan, 1938. Not bad, not bad. We've got um, two things done already. We have all the requirements we need once we annex the Netherlands through the public mechanics. And once we have developed nuclear weapons, all we have to do is release the United States, declare war on them, bomb them, and simply annex them again. So that's two down, one to go. And the last one, we have to occupy mainland France. Now the Frenchmen are in the Allies, so that means having to deal with the UK as well. Fortunately, they're both pretty weak. Let's get everything in position, shall we? Two hours later. It looks like the troops are starting to file in. Now, to deal with the French and the UK, we'll probably have to resort to some naval landings. Well, we could just cut through Belgium, but why bother, really? We can just make a cheeky naval landing and go straight for Paris instead. Same with the UK, we will try to hit Dover and other ports along the southern shore and just roll them up all the way to Liverpool and Manchester and capitulate them that way. Our armies are far superior superior to anything they currently have. They may outnumber us somewhat, but our troops are far higher quality. And I think it will be a good idea to go to war early, so we'll simply justify a war goal on the French and hit them where it hurts. And with the justification on France finished, it's time for the Empire of Japan to defeat the last two major opponents and claim its spot among the great powers of the world, and for us to get our achievements. And again, we're not gonna call in our allies, we can handle this on our own. Well, the French army is large and they're keeping us fairly well contained. 
But once the UK falls, that's another 24 divisions I can swing south and that should be the last nail in the coffin of the French. We're right outside of Paris, but they're putting up stiff resistance here. Like the French army is quite large. Et voila, that is France dealt with. Now for the peace deal. We don't really have any designs on the United Kingdom itself, but we do have designs on France. We require all of mainland France for the achievement Tour de France. So we'll just take mainland France. As for the United Kingdom, not much to do here. I suggest just um, if you want to conquer it, by all means do so. I feel like satelliting a lot of these things and we'll puppet whatever's left of them. And that concludes our war with the Allies. Now we control and own all of mainland France. This is also enough for the achievement Sunrise Invasion. So that one's in the bag without having to annex the Dutch. Good for the Dutch. Now for our Tour de France achievement, we need 20 fully equipped bicycle divisions. They, they never state how well equipped that bicycle division has to be. This one qualifies. Just a single unit of... Um, bicycle boys here. If we were to convert one of these armies into these bicycle units, that would conclude the achievement as well. It would give us Tour de France. And now finally, for Tojo shot first, all that's required is for us to develop nuclear weapons, which were still a bit off because it's only 1938. But oh well, well, we'll always beat the United States to them because the United States no longer exists. So we'll just get nuclear weapons, we'll release the United States, bomb the United States and then annex the United States again and the circle of life is complete. One eternity later. And we're back. It's 1945. We have developed some nuclear weapons and we're ready to release the United States. And in case you were wondering, the world has turned to shit. Um, in the meanwhile, I tried to do some funky things against the Axis. Did not play out as intended. Lost France. Dug in in the Netherlands. I'm slowly, slowly pulling a reverse Barbarossa from what used to be Russia. On the upside, I did manage to get the, the Italians out of North Africa. But back to the purpose of this last part. We will release the nation not as a puppet. We will simply release this nation, the United States. Justify a war goal. will take 10 days. 12 seconds later. All that's left now is to declare our war. With the state of war declared, we can now drop a nuclear bomb on California. I'm sure many of you have had the same idea in the past. <laughs> And with that, Tojo has shot first. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's uh, It's been interesting making it. I've not played Japan in quite a while, so I had a lot of fun. Now, if you like this video, leave a like. Consider subscribing for more of them. And uh, hit me up in the comments with other interesting challenges or achievements you want to see me make uh, videos of. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Hit that dislike button. Tell me in the comments what I did wrong or what you want to see changed. I'm always looking for some feedback. This has been me, Bittersteel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.